What's up everyone, this is Frank from Marsman Gaming, and another year is coming to an end. Too quickly, I might add. And man, 2023 has been an historic year for gaming, for both great and awful reasons. In this video, I reflect on this past year, not to talk about where we are as a society, or how it's a little bit harder to get into my pants. I'm here to talk about what's really important, and that's gaming, and why 2023 showed the best and worst of it. Let's dive in. But before we continue with the video, if you like variety gaming content, including views, opinion pieces, and stream. Make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe, and also hit that bell for notifications. Also, go check out some of the other recent opinion pieces below. Now back to the video. I want to start with the best of 2023, and without question, this year has blessed gamers with high quality and quantity of games. Throughout the year, we have been hit with an influx of awesome games ranging from highly anticipated ones to surprise hits that have left our wallets lighter and touching grass a much rarer occurrence. It could be argued that 2023 is one of the greatest years for gamers in game releases in well over a decade. Now I know what you're thinking, that myself and others are being dramatic. We must be caught up in the vibes. But when you look a little deeper and you get past the vibes and dive into the numbers, you can really make a strong case that 2023 has been historic. A recent article by Axios, who did a study on Metacritic at the end of November, showed review scores of games scoring 90 or above in 2023 compared to other years. And 2023 had 25 games that had a 90 plus score. The last year to have 20 plus games with that high of a score was 2011. Now, if you're not a Metacritic fan, on OpenCritic, which is another source, this showed that 2023 had 17 games scoring a 90 plus score, which is its highest number since 2013 when it started recording. Only in 2020 and 2018 did they have 10 plus games score that high. Now, how did 2023 produce this output? Well, after the industry was ravaged with delays and pauses, Due to the aftermath of COVID, it feels like 2023 was the perfect storm of these delays finally coming to light and the industry getting back on schedule. It's not just quality and quantity that has shined through, but some diversity as well. Let's take a look at this year's Game Awards Game of the Year nominees. You have Baldur's Gate 3, which broke the mold and brought a turn-based D&D style game to the national scene, to critical success. Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, an open world action adventure game that helped revitalize a six-year-old console and helped contribute to an increase in Japan's GDP? Alan Wake 2 is a beautiful horror narrative driven game, probably one of the best looking games we've seen in a long time. Spider-Man 2 is a superhero action adventure open world game. Super Mario Bros. Wonder is a platformer. Resident Evil 4 is a remake of a classic game. Now this is only a small snapshot, but you can see it touches multiple genres and style of games. Some of you may say, well, where are the new IPs? And yes, sequels have been dominant this year. But even though they may not be Game of the Year nominees or winners, we still got our fill of new IPs. Hogwarts Legacy vastly exceeded expectation and is currently, at the time of this video, number one in sales in both the US and UK, even over Call of Duty. Hi-Fi Rush was another surprise platformer, bringing in unique audio and music aspects to its gameplay. Even Starfield, which had much more mixed reception, was the number one most covered video game in 2023. We also got great new IPs from smaller and indie studios like Sea of Stars, Dave the Diver, Lies of P, Cocoon, Dredge, heck, we even got some redemption arcs from games like Cyberpunk 2077 and Halo Infinite this year. The list goes on. Gamers from each genre has been eating good in 2023. Well, maybe outside of hardcore battle royal fans, but don't fret my friends, even the LEGO Fortnite could help fill that appetite. We even had small projects explode into crazes like Battlebit and Lethal Company. 2023 was a year to broaden your gaming horizons and unfortunately develop a massive backlog. Now we have to get to the worst of 2023. As mentioned last segment, the amount of high quality games we got this year was superb, but boy, we got some absolute stinkers as well. I know that every year we get bad games, but 2023 has given or cursed us with what could be referred as the Four Horsemen of the gaming apocalypse. I mean, if IGN is giving you a four or lower, then you know, you fucked it up. But there is a worse development than bad games being released, and that's this. These are apology letters from developers and publishers for games that released broken, missing features, or not running to expectations. Now this occurrence is not isolated to 2023. We have seen some huge flops and a lot of PR from games like Cyberpunk 2077 and Battlefield 2042. But what's worse is in 2023, instead of learning these harsh lessons, we are still seeing the same company 
companies do this trend, and that is developers and publishers knowingly putting out these undercooked or watered down versions of games with the hope of fixing the game over time, while also still charging full price I might add. They are practically having the consumers be quality control or beta testers for their games, then drum up a PR apology letter and promise to be better. Now if you're unsure of why this is a big deal, let's forget about video games for a minute and you went to the store to buy product X. When you head to the store clerk and say, hey I saw product X on TV, does it really do what it says it does? And the store clerk says, absolutely. It does A, B, and C. And you say, even C? You buy it, take it home, and realize A and B does work, but not as fast as the old model, or not as well as it was promised. And C works only half the time and needs to be updated at a later date. You take it back to the store and it says, yes, we do realize C has problems, but we're working diligently. And in three to six months, make sure to bring it in and we'll update the system. Why treat the customer this way? Why? Because fuck them, that's why. Oh, and one last thing. Sorry. Now most people would call this situation a scam, fraudulent, or bad consumer practices. But for gamers, we call it modern gaming. No one exemplified this lousy trend in 2023 as well as the day before by Fantastic. Now I am sure by now you have heard of this awful tale. I will not dive too deep into this trash, but I will give you the clip notes. The day before was originally advertised back in 2021 as an open world survival MMO with an impressive trailer giving off Last of Us vibes in a PvPVE type of game. But then the game went through multiple delays, the team went dark, and many wondered if this game was real or would ever come to life. But here we came into 2023, and Fantastic came out of the shadows to give us a release date for December 7th early access, at a $40 price tag, and $50 at the time of full release. But something strange, right before the early access release date occurred, when developers while discussing the game, stated, to a person who didn't believe in us, we made this game for you. Later quoting, please don't accuse us of scamming, and please don't accuse us of an asset flip. Pretty strange things to state, almost as if they knew something was off about the game. But now it's release time, and the day before rocketed up sellers list on Steam, with at one point reaching 30,000 concurrent players. But what we got when people can actually join a server lobby was an empty, buggy, and at times broken experience, completely different than what was originally promised. Fantastic put out the apology letters with promises of fixing the servers, fixing the issues. Who the hell needs your junk? But the storm was too strong. When confronted with what occurred, Fantastic replied, this was our first experience shit happens and boy that is one big pile of shit Fantastic would shut down four days after release. But why did this happen? Fantastic isn't the only example, and it feels that this trend is growing. Has general greed consumed our favorite gaming companies with plans to rob our wallets while doing the least amount of work? Possibly, but I may have another reason, and that's game development is hard and expensive. Game development cycles used to be two to three years back in the day, and have now reached five to six years for large-scale development. And with recent leaks and reports, we are seeing AAA game budgets reach hundreds of millions of dollars to make. With this increased time and cost leads to higher risks for gaming companies. This risk leads to strict deadlines and time crunching for developers to recoup these kind of large investments. These scenarios have led to developers cutting content or publishers pushing to put out unfinished products with the caveat that we can fix it over time with updates. But let's get the money now. Or maybe it really could be that greed guy. The last part of my tale of 2023 that I want to address is the massive layoffs of developing teams and marketing community members this year. We are looking at over 10,000 layoffs and it has come from all over the industry from Microsoft to Sony to Bungie. The list of companies laying off employees is extensive. There probably hasn't been a bigger Grinch this year when it comes to this than the Embracer Group. The Embracer Group over the last few years gobbled up quite a few studios and IPs and expanded with an anticipation of securing a two billion dollar investment by Savvy Games Group which failed. So did the higher ups who decided to expand the teams take a pay cut or lose their jobs as a result of this mistake? Of course not! They closed multiple studios, laid off over 900 employees to cut costs, becoming the grim reaper of gaming in 2023. But this example extends beyond the Embracer group. A lot of companies grew faster than they should have, and they have also not been managed very well. With development cycles going longer and budgets getting larger, it feels companies are going with the tried and true business saying, 
game profits over people. The technology is advancing, but the methods to make this game isn't getting less expensive. And to cut costs and to keep profits, the devs are the ones who are going to have to take the hit. Now without question, there have been failed games and projects that have resulted in studios closing. And everything is not only on the publishers. I also don't say this for you to boycott any games, but as we end 2023 and game sales is up in the US from 2022, and globally games have a higher value this year than in 2022, and companies are posting record revenue and profits, seeing these huge layoffs is sad and troubling. One thing I want you all to remember is that the games make the plastic boxes and the brands we cherish and fight over today, not the other way around. And these games are made by the developers. We should appreciate the devs who make the games we love today, and I hope all those who were laid off find a new home very quickly. As we close the book on 2023, we reflect on the great games and awful moments it brought us. We now look towards 2024 on what we hope is a great year of games. Cheers to 2023 on a historic year for gaming for both the right and wrong reason. Thank you everyone for watching. Make sure if you haven't already, hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. This is Frank from Marsman Gaming signing off. See ya.